Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Grounded. This is episode 23. Last time we did some more stuff in the upper yard. We killed the green shield bug, kind of fell on it by accident. We went into the woodpile and fought a termite king and grabbed the chip from in there. And what was the other thing? There was a third thing we did, but I can't remember at the moment. Anyway, oh yeah, we got the, uh, the spicy coltana. Which is why we are now here to fight the Broodmother. That is kind of the main thing I want to get done today. And then, if that doesn't take too long, we're going to head over and, I guess, begin our our delve into the Undershed. Though, there is actually something I want to check in the pond after this. So, we'll fight the Broodmother and then we will uh, head over there to the Oak Tree area and see if we can find this little thing. And then... Maybe he will end at the Undershed. We'll, like, begin our our Spelunk and carry that into the next episode. But I upgraded the Roly-Poly armor we got last time. You can see it is level 8, so it is the most upgraded armor we've had because armor is actually a lot easier, a lot more straightforward to upgrade than weapons. You just need the plates, the three tiers of plates. It's not maxed out. Also, I went with Sleek rather than... Uh, Bulky is the other one. So it has a little bit less defense, but it has uh, more block strength, so we can block for longer. I also upgraded the Spicy Cold Tana to level 7, which I think is the second highest level, because the next upgrade requires Mighty Jewels, and those are, I think, just for the last level. Those are kind of your, you know, Titanite block sort of upgrade. So... For those, we need scarab shells, the twinkling shells, and I did hunt down a couple scarabs between episodes, but it is not easy. However, I confirmed what I said last time, that the scarab is weak against all elements, so I've been one-shotting them with, like, fresh arrows or something. I also made the salt morning star for when we're dealing with enemies that are weak against salty, and I think that's it. I don't think I upgraded anything else too much, but I was grinding materials by hunting wolf spiders to make the tier 2 upgrade materials for weapons, because, you know, we have a lot of weapons that we need to upgrade, and you need those tier 2 materials to make the tier 3 material. So, before we head in and fight the Broodmother, we are going to want to equip Mithridatism, because it does not provide you with complete immunity to her poison, but it gives you, like, 75% resistance to poison damage, so it'll help, even if it isn't as strong as it used to be. And we have a, you know, bunch of the usual defense buff, attack buff, and healing. Uh, we have a might loaf, which is not a very good meal buff, but attack stamina is better than no meal buff, and we really don't have any better recipes. I thought I got the spider sliders last time, but I guess we didn't actually buy that. So, let's begin. Uh, I don't think the fact that it's getting dark is going to matter, because I think the lighting is always kind of the same in here. I mean, we've been here before, when we first came up into the hedge. But of course, we didn't have the item to summon the Broodmother, and we wouldn't have been able to beat her anyway. But yeah, here is her lair. She is kind of up top somewhere. And we need to use our Broodmother BLT to fight her. Now, like I did with my boss fights video, we're just going to save here instead of having to come all the way back here if I die. You know, I could have set up like a lean to out front, but she despawns if you die, so you'd have to make a whole bunch of the BLTs and everything, and it's a lot more convenient when we're playing a solo file here to just save, and if we die, we can just load. So, you might consider that a little cheesy, but I think it is worth it for cutting out the uh, tedium time. So, I guess we'll just uh, summon her. Pop one of those in there. I do want to get a look at her while she's coming down, though. She doesn't look that impressive. Also, you might notice that she looks distinctly different from all of the other orb weavers encountered, because she's actually based on a spiny or devil orb weaver, rather than a golden or yellow. 
Golden are the really big ones. Yellow, I think, are the garden variety in the States. Regretting my life decisions right now. This is not a bad one, too, but I think we're not close enough. I feel like they made her smaller. I feel like she used to be a little bigger than this. Because we fought some pretty big bugs now, and she's not too much bigger than that. I'm also curious if the mantis is bigger than this, because mantises are not huge. Okay, that's maybe a little close, but I uh, was testing out, like, poses and stuff for <laughs> what looks good in photo mode. Most of the attack animations do not look good because they are just, like, a fixed state. But the jump attack animation is kind of cool for the Coltana. Alright, so you can see she has the regular spider three-hit combo, rather than the wolf spider's five-hit combo. But she also has three phases as we do damage. So she has, I think, a bit more health than the assistant manager. But you can see how much damage we do with this combo. Alright, that's maybe a decent one. I wanted to get at least one of Pete jumping through the air swinging. But also, I don't want to cover it up with the number. Alright, we actually might be overprepared for this, but considering I'm going to have to kill her multiple times, I'm alright with that. Alright, I think we're in phase two now. Where she will summon spiderlings, and she will debuff your damage by a lot with that scream she just did. I don't think there's a way to avoid that. Okay, now she's using the wolf spider combo. <laughs> Still trying to get good ones. I mean, I have a save before this, so worst comes to worst, I can get a photo, you know, after the episode, just load back to here. Alright, gonna pop one of my liquid rage. But you can see because of our debuff, we're doing very little damage now. Alright, gonna get a bandage too to kind of offset the damage your poison is doing. Alright, now we're getting bigger junior spiders. Which are still not very strong against this. Now, because we're using heavy armor, our stamina is not going to be as good for swings. We're not going to be able to swing as much, but I was hoping the Might Loaf might offset that a little bit. I can't remember what she does in Phase 3 differently. Aside from summon more of these guys. Oh yeah, she gets faster, I remember that. I think that applies to the other boss as well. Oh. Oh, she's mixing it up and using both combos. I do have spicy arrows I brought, and I totally forgot to use them. Oh, let's, uh, I forgot to get a scan of her. I could also use this to get some health back, but she's pretty much done. That wasn't too bad. So I had the impression they were making her stronger, and I think if we hadn't used the upgraded armor here, we would have struggled a little more, but that wasn't too bad. So she drops a bunch of broodmothery bits, fangs, venom, chunk, and we're going to need to grind some of those if we want to essentially make some of the gear you can make out of it. But, 
I want to check how many of those we need to make the other boss item. If I can even find where that is. Orchid Mantis Kebab requires five Broodmother Chunks. Okay. So yeah, I think I am just going to grind her again between episodes. Because the fight doesn't really change from that point, And it should get easier as we get stronger. So, finally check that off the list after like, what... 10 episodes of mentioning, hey, we're going to fight the Broodmother soon. It's a neat fight, but I think this sword may actually be a little too strong, especially when it's upgraded this much. It might have been a little more fair if we'd used the Antlion Greatsword, which is what I used in my, uh, my Boss Bites video back in Early Access. Okay, so now that we got that done... We're gonna make our way down to the pond. Oh, worse than my mom's Brussels sprouts. There is actually a mission I want to check off here because we've had this quest for the Toad Swamp for a long time and <laughs> not gotten rid of it. There's also the Bird Bath one. I was going to do that one while we were up there, but I forgot to grab the uh, trail marker materials, because you remember that you complete those quests by planting one of these. Or rather, you have to find a blueprint of one of these that's already there and complete it. Clover, sprig, plant fiber. All pretty simple materials, I was just too lazy to climb back down. Ooh, feather. Kind of stumbled right into this. I think they increase the amount of pieces that feathers drop, because I'm finding a lot more of these ones that drop, like, six pieces, or five or six, instead of just, like, one. So that one would have came from the birdbath. You know, when it lands there, it drops feathers. Grab a couple of these. What is it? Two, two, one. So we might actually be able to do that. Also, you might notice our new torch, the one that we made after killing the green shield bug, seems to be a bit brighter than the regular one, has a bit of a, a wider radius. Not 100% sure though. Okay, let's try this because I'm gonna forget and I really do wanna get rid of this quest so that we can hopefully get one that gives us even more raw science because those kinda, they go up as you make progress in the game, what quests are available. So we gotta do the shitty ones before we get ones that are worth more. But we're gonna go back up the hedge. We're gonna try to get to the bird bath, because I have once again looked it up and checked the spot. And it was the spot we tried to do before. It just requires a little a little luck with some of your jumps. So we're going to try it once again and see if I only fail when I'm recording and not when I'm trying to do it on my own. Man, I always forget how far that middle part of the hedge is from where you initially climb up. Do you think it's over there? I really wish I put a torch here. Well, I guess you can see the workbench. Do we need food? I don't think we need food. I didn't bring any food. Oh, and we can scan the parts while we go up here. So there is that. One benefit to backtracking here. I like how this thing is not even really... You know... Solidly placed. It looks like it was just dropped down. I mean, I guess it is supposed to be like a... A rigid geodesic dome, so... It would be kind of flat on the bottom. I don't need that. I need this. Science. We can make the Club of the Mother Demon, which is a fairly powerful generic damage weapon. And that one is pretty good for putting an element onto. One thing I'm not sure about is the Sour element, because so far I don't think I've seen anything that is weak against it. Or anything that resists it. So I'm not really sure what the point of it is. Okay, and then we can do Mask of the Mother Demon, Broodmother Trophy, and Stuffed a Broodmother. Man, that's got to take up a lot of space. Maybe we put one of those on the rock across from our base. 
Alright. Didn't it drop venom as well? Yeah, Broodmother Venom. I guess it's just used in one of the other recipes. Okay. So, we need to go... Uh, this way. Also, thankfully, this torch, which can be repaired unlike the other torches, only requires coal chunks to repair, so... It's very easy. We don't need to get green shield bug parts every time. Okay, with this torch, I actually feel like we can finally see enough Flying! here for it to not be super dark. Because uh, we tried this with the previous torch, and it really didn't work out. Okay, now we gotta go to the next zip line. No, we need to go right here. Uh, this is gonna be so much harder to do at night. Or we can just fall off immediately. Yep, great start. Mm. Yeah, boy. Time is it? 23? I think we should be able to sleep. Which, as we've seen before, is not going to make it that much less dark here, but it'll still be an improvement. I need you. I need to eat you in the morning. We can also take off Mithridatism now. I'm going to put Natural Explorer back on because it's actually noticeably faster. Your movement speed when you have that. Or at least because we have it maxed out. Alright, sleep. I'm not going to spend too long struggling with this, so if we don't make it up, we're once again going to abandon it, and I'm just going to fucking do it off screen, because it is not that important. You're not missing much, but it was just one of those things I wanted to do because it was a little hard to do. It wasn't the easiest path to get there, and I still don't really know how they intend you to get there. There's no obvious direct way. Like, it kind of feels like you're cheesing it when you do it the way that we're going to do it. I don't think we'll need the torch, hopefully. But it also seems to have pretty good durability because it's like barely gone down yet. The bar is still full under the X. God damn. The speed is actually <laughs> launching me off. I'm going too quick. So I think once we get this wrapped up and that area in the pond, we might actually be mostly done with everything in the lower yard. Because so I'm trying to think of anything else we haven't like gone back to yet, and nothing's really coming up. Okay. So the leaf we want, we're getting across here is yeah i think it is this one right here you want to get over there and then we have to kind of like mash jump right in there and sometimes it works and sometimes you fall because you want to get like kind of in here yep good and then okay well if you fall it's not too big of a deal yet it's only when you get a little higher and you fall or a little lower, rather. And then you start to slip. <sighs> and then you fall all the way down. And have to do it again, and again, and again. Why, why would they make this so awkward to get to? Because usually the answer to that question is, if it's awkward to get to, they want you to build to it. But here... 
building to that little across part would be such a fucking pain in the ass to carry all that stuff up here every time. Because you'd need, like, probably three pieces of floor. And that's assuming you can even build up here. I don't even know if you can. Okay, you can. But yeah, it, it just seems like the payoff is not worth the amount of effort it would take to get up there. There's not even a milk molar up there. Or maybe there was. I can't remember. If there was, I broke it already. I also found some more milk molars in the upper yard when I was hunting down wolf spiders. Because basically, I just used our resource scanner and scan for the spider fangs and, you know, chase down the red dots on the map from there. So I did find a couple milk molars in the upper yard that we hadn't found yet. And again, I don't think that's really a big deal if I do that off, off recording. I almost said off stream. It's not a stream. All right, just... Okay. Okay. I can say just go for it. I... I did just go for it, and it did not work out. However, we might be able to make this into an opportunity, because if we can get right up there... Hmm. Might be an invisible wall here. Oh, oh. Oh, boy. I mean, to be fair, you can actually climb back up from pretty far down here by just jumping on leaves. I don't think I can get up that one. I might have actually, <laughs> despite just saying that, fallen beyond the point where I can get back up there. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Fuck the fucking bird bath. <laughs> There's nothing up there, really. It's just a, a puddle and some mosquitoes. preemptively destroy this mosquito, because I knew it was going to come after me as soon as I turned away. Even after all the progress we've made, mosquitoes and other flying enemies are still just as annoying as they were before. I guess we can make the staves now, so we could actually make just a magic staff and fucking blast it out of the air. That might be a little more effective than using the crossbow. I don't know how those staves work yet. Obviously there's no like mana or anything, I think it might just use up durability every time you fire it. But here is one of our other quests, the Toad Swamp. For uh, Rash from Battletoads. Who I guess they can use because Microsoft owns Battletoads as well as Obsidian. There we go. Fucking a hundred raw science. What a waste of time. But, that'll free up another quest slot, so that we can hopefully get something better. Though, considering the one that he gave me most recently was Acorn Face Mask, I'm not really too confident that we're close to getting the good ones. Don't even need to boil it. There are a lot of them for finding the Burgle Chips, but I actually don't know if... You just miss out on getting the raw science for that if you find the chip before getting the quest. Or if that just gives it to you when you turn in the chip anyway, because you do get a bunch of raw science when you turn it in. Now regarding the undershed, I think we have pretty much everything we need for going in there. We've got a good torch, we've got good armor, we've got a variety of weapons to exploit whatever weak points we need to. And I think we are going to bring our diving gear, because there are obviously a, there's a big flooded area that we found when we went down there last time, so we might need to do some diving. I don't know if that's required to get to... Dr. Tully, but there's definitely going to be a reason to swim down there, so we're going to keep our diving gear with us when we head over there. Okay, so this thing I noticed, I guess I didn't actually notice this prior to one of the recent episodes, but when I was going down to grab those 
uh, muscle sprouts to make more healing potions for the Broodmother, I noticed that there was... Oh, I should probably put my diving gear on. There was another lab building over here that you could see through a window. Okay, there's that one, so... Got it kind of triangulated here. It's over here somewhere. Over by the one that required the key card to get into. Which was over here, right? Yeah, so there is this tunnel here, which we hadn't opened before. I might have just assumed that this is the one that goes to the thing. But in here, there is a locked door. You can see there's not really... Not really much in here. Oh, I found a, I found an audio log for, I guess, one of the research stations we hadn't found. So, let's see if I can play that, if I can find it. It is first shrinking. Verbal transcription unit, 89.4.14. Order number 80. Virgil, are you there? Yes, sir. It appears that the shrinking process has not overly affected my functionality I do not know how this is possible. I previously believed that all the parts of my functional unit were required for operation, but apparently they were not. Perhaps that means I have some extra storage space. <laughs> Very philosophical. Do you feel anything else? No, everything appears to be the same. So you can see through that window that there was a button on the other side of that door to open it from the inside, so you need to find a way in there from somewhere else, and then that is just the shortcut out. And I looked it up. Apparently, the way to get in there is in the, the depths, but it's kind of like on the ceiling somewhere. There'll be like a an entrance, so we have to go down here and look up. There is also a trinket we apparently missed down here by one of the airlock buttons. So we'll grab that while we're here, and then we'll probably never have another reason to come back here. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been enough days for the muscle sprouts to respawn. Okay, so if we want to get back into the depths. I think we have to go through here, jump out the airlock. So, pull out our uh, underwater functional torch, because apparently this coal is so hot it burns underwater. And over by the button, I think over by this. You know, to... Turn that on. There should be a skeleton around here somewhere. Hmm. This is the key cave, right? This is where the the mossy key, I think, we got. But apparently by the, the broken lab part, there's supposed to be a skeleton that's, like, crushed underneath some of it. Hmm. I don't really have much more to go on. It's that it's near one of the switches, specifically the one near the broken part of the lab. I mean, the other switch is back here. I don't think there's anything broken over on this side. Yeah, there's like nothing over here. You know what I should have done? I should have marked that other lab kind of like over here so that we could try to triangulate it from underneath.
All right. Well, I don't really know where else to look. I mean, there's not that much of the lab that is broken off. Is there raw science just sitting right there? Wow, apparently we never came in here. A lot of meat. Parts. Did we come in here? Is this where I was like, oh, I could have just been refilling my air here. It is. Maybe I just never opened these chests or didn't bother to take the stuff because I didn't have room. Yeah, this is where you open the door. You notice how this stuff has not gone bad even though it's been sitting in here for a very long time. I don't think that stuff actually counts as spawned in until you pick it up. Choke it down, Pete. But we can eat that water flea meat. Hmm. I mean, I don't see where else it would be. Like, there's not a lot of places to hide down here, unless he's in the actual lab piece. Like, inside? How do I even get inside this one? I don't know if we ever looked in here. Maybe, like, under here? No. Oh yeah, there it is. The scabby there. And the toxicology badge, which gives you 90% resistance to gas, and I think poison as well, and complete immunity to dust, so you don't get slowed down by the, the dust effects. Suspicious snapshot four. Have we found any suspicious snapshots? I mean, we found one of these other cards. Expedition member D. Spencer, Department Pharmaceutical Toxicology, date December 30th, 1989. Today I head back below the depths. What I caught a glimpse of on my last frigid dive has piqued my interest. Some manner of cultivated, fleshy variant of cruciferous vegetable. Holistic remedies are not really my forte, but the benefit of this sulfo sulforaphane in Brussels sprouts are well established. Could there be an enhancement of that compound lurking within these yoked monstrosities? Only a field study can answer that and maybe provide some insight on the effects we're experiencing down here. I've been observing from a distance, but I saw the intern the other day. He doesn't seem well. Absolutely avoiding from now on. I should not like to have another run-in with the giant koi fish, but she seems somehow less dangerous. Anyway, dip down, grab a sample, and head back to base for some actual science. The kids haven't been around for weeks. I think it's safe. So the intern, of course, was the one that went crazy and started putting ant heads on sticks. Uh, our oxygen was ticking down that whole time. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't just put me in the fucking base? And suspicious snapshot. Where does that go? I guess under ominent? Photo appears to be of a moldy castle spire sprouting up out of a moat. Okay. I mean, we know where that is, but what exactly is it indicating? Does the castle have something to do with Ominent? Do they have some kind of, like, outpost over there? Because we didn't really go in the castle since it was on the other side of the moat. Alright, well, we still have all of our gear. In fact, I'm not even sure if we lost anything. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to set a waypoint. Hopefully... Hmm. I don't know if you can do deeper waypoints. Am I going the right way? Kinda. I guess where is... 
the depth mouth. Because let's try going through there and then going backwards while looking up. It's funny, I expected the Broodmother to be the thing that takes a lot longer, and this would just be like a quick aside on the way back to base, but this definitely seems to be taking up more time. I'm gonna kill one of these guys to get my oxygen back. I was like, man, they're doing a lot of damage, but I forgot that, you know, we're not really wearing our armor right now. We're only wearing one piece of it. Okay, so I guess we're looking for a hatch on the ceiling. Maybe this one. Surprised we never noticed this, because I did swim over here, but I guess I wasn't really looking up. I was looking kind of down for bones and scales. Okay, it's not full of water. Got a granola bar. Crap. Another scabby. Holodazzle. On research note. Okay, I think this is Dr. Tully. As we sit perched in the cliff face down here, away from the street noise and pervasive fauna, it seems we can do some real long-term undisturbed work. The majestic sunk koi lives the same day over and over, sucking up morsels from here and there, depositing waste wherever. The rest of the creatures swim to and fro and play their part as well, eating and being eaten, reproducing, growing, dying, all this pond microcosm. We could harness this cycle and put it to use, a meeting of aquaculture and hydroponics in a natural, nearly microscopic setting could be but one step on the path to solving the hunger crisis. I begin drawing up schematics for a kind of turduckened aquaponics-inspired lab setup in the deep pond substrate, where we can just tap into the natural systems already at play, with a few enhancements, of course. I'll task Burgle with running the sim simulations shortly, assuming that he can muster up the RAM for it. So this would have been built before they built the rest of the lab. This is just like, just like a little outpost he put down here. And there doesn't really seem to be anything else in here. Aside from the scabby, I'm not sure it was worth coming in here. And with the scabby, I'll probably forget about it for a while, and then eventually when I go to change it, I might notice, hey, look, I don't recognize that one. Okay, that is another thing off of our list. There's actually one more thing in the pond that we didn't find, but I don't exactly know where it is. I think it is near the net. There's basically like a little little itty-bitty cave in this back wall somewhere. Oh, there's a milk molar. Which I can't even get because I don't have anything that uh, chops underwater. Well, shit. I mean, at least this one has a pretty obvious way to get back here. Just look for the net. But yeah, there's like a, a little tunnel tucked away between these rocks somewhere. Um, not back here. Boy, I hope I didn't just trap myself. Is this it? This is it. Some more of these fucking ant heads. Do you think the intern put these ones here as well? Underwater? <laughs> A little bit of chromatic aberration for some implied madness. I mean, I guess we're going to use the Broodmother as the thumbnail. That's pretty guaranteed here. But look how many of them there are. This man was killing ants nonstop for days. 
<sighs> all so that he could create his magnum opus. The Abomination Totem. A recipe detailing how to create a disgusting abomination. Hell yeah. It's just a bunch of different bug parts fused together into this, like, chimera monstrosity. Oh, there's a Supreme Marble in here. And a Supreme Court site. I like that he's almost like a preacher in front of his is, you know, congregation here. <laughs> My children, let me tell you of the joining of the flesh and why you too should do it. All right, that was uh, the other thing in the pond I want to check off, so I think we've got, again, everything we need from the pond. We'll never have to come back here, except for all the times I'll have to come back here to get more muscle sprouts. Because there's nowhere else to get them, and they're our only good healing item. And I don't think there's ever an alternative. You know, like a more advanced alternative to using those. So, let's head back to base. We'll drop off our stuff, and then we will make our way over to the Undershed. And uh, I guess we'll poke around a little bit. And try not to fall into the spider trench this time. But I think we are finally, like, getting somewhat reasonably close to Spider detected. finishing the game. I mean, obviously, there's a decent amount of story stuff we still have to do. But at the moment... That should keep me safe. Safer. We don't have a lot of non-story stuff left to do. That said, we still haven't done any of the mixers, and that would be probably the best way to get more raw science. But I was about to activate that one, except I'm pretty sure that one is going to have these guys. There's a, apparently, I think my, my scanner is broken because it's just flashing constantly, but I was going to say, there is a apparently a milk molder around here. Yeah, I think it's just bugged. It's going to keep doing that until we actually get close to something else. Oh no, why did we get, like, tutorial quest for crafting fin flops and stuff? I can't unpin that either. Alright, Club of the Mother Demon, you can see it does a lot of damage, and that is without any kind of upgrade, so we could probably max out the damage on it, but I guess the, the real advantage it has is it has a very high stun, so you're likely to stun anything you give a good whack with it. Alright, where are our brood mother parts? Oh, they're still in the pond because I fucking, I didn't grab my backpack where we drowned. Whatever, I'll go back for those later. Not really anything in there that we need for our current adventure, so, you know, I'm not concerned about it. Um, why not have room for these guys? Also, the elemental arrows turn back into feather arrows when they hit something, so you can't just recover them. But we can just turn them into more. They're very cheap on the actual candy. They just need a lot of feather arrows, which require the crow feathers that I don't want to <laughs> give up. All right, put that in here. Oh, right, sorry. I said that this is gas and poison. It is only gas. It is negative poison resist. So that is the downside. All of these badges have like a kind of negative to them which is why I'm not really bothering with using them, but also because we do need the protection from falling <laughs> for our dandelion. I don't know if we're ever going to get rid of that. All right. Um, put that in there. And then I think we have everything we need. 
any of my weapons need repair? I mean, this is all good. The torch, um, I mean, maybe I should bring... What I don't need, I think, is the... I don't need the liquid rage. Oh, I didn't bring any human food, because I didn't have any uh, gum nuggets left to make sticky. Okay, so we're going to go to sleep. make a meal for just the the kind of fullness buff. Assuming we have enough to make any of this shit, yeah. We really only have enough for mite loaf, but that'll give us the meal buff and grab some water. No water filtration tablets needed. Ah damn it. I was meaning to equip this and I end up drinking out of it instead and wasting another drop. Fill that up. Don't need that equipped, though I should repair it. It's a little bit of a waste, but it's not like there's that much of a shortage of cold chunks. I think they respawn up on the barbecue spill. So far, repair glue has not really been a problem. It hasn't been limited enough that I'm like, man, I gotta go out and grind parts for repair glue. It's just very slow to make more. But considering we can use, you know, termite parts and stuff for it. Wow, I have a lot of termite parts after last time. It's not really hard to make more of this, and it's actually kind of more convenient for repair, because you can just carry a stack of this and repair whatever you need. What I should have done is I should have started cooking this before we went to sleep and it would have been ready when we woke up. Yeah, so if I want to upgrade anything else beyond what it's at right now, I'm going to need a whole bunch of mighty globs and those require the tier 2 plates. I don't know what you need the tier 3 plates for. Because there's sturdy whetstone, there's brittle whetstone, and then there is supreme whetstone. But I don't think you use Supreme Whetstones for Mighty Jewels? Oh yeah, you do. Okay. And you need five of these to max out a weapon. So, you need a lot of Twinkling Shells and a lot of Whetstone. And I don't think there was a recipe to make the Tier 3 materials. I don't think you ever get the chance to make those. Alright. Meal is done. And immediately eat it. And now we're going to head over to the Undershed. I don't know if we're going to do much there, because we've been going for a bit, probably about an hour. But we'll at least get there and begin preparation for our next adventure, where we will maybe locate Dr. Wendell Tully. I really don't know. Again, I haven't really spoiled anything for myself for, like, the story progress from here, so I don't know if we're going to find a lab down there, or if he's just going to be, like, a buried raisin. But presumably, we will find some kind of evidence of him being around. I don't know what triggered that survival shit to pop up. Like, we've been down to the pond so many times, so I don't know what specifically we touched that was like, oh, you're entering the pond for the first time. Let me tell you, uh what you need to survive down here. Let's not fall through and land on another shield bug, because I don't have my gas mask. Honestly, those shield bugs seem like something they added just for the sake of enemy variety, but then they were like, we don't really want to do anything with these, so you can't really craft very much with them. Take some of this donut with us, no? Since I didn't bring any rations.
I'm not really sure that donuts can be considered to rot. I think I've mentioned this before, but, you know, modern, like, mass-produced donuts are usually so much sugar and preservatives that they just get really hard and stale, but are otherwise edible. They never really rot. I guess maybe they might get moldy if you leave them out for a while. Okay. Into the undershed. So, for respawning down here, because we can't... It won't let us build, like, a, a lean-to. There is a field station down here, which I activated when I was down here between episodes at one point to fight Black Ox Beetles. So there's a field station here that we can respawn at Bye, over spy. on this other rock. But we know that there are a bunch of Black Ox Beetles here and Roly Polies and Wolf Spiders. Wolf Spiders are almost, like, not a threat anymore. I mean, their poison is, if I don't have Mithridatism equipped, they will do a decent chunk of damage, but... Their actual attacks are pretty harmless, and we do so much damage with this sword. Oh yeah, there's a tape here. I didn't pick it up, so that I wouldn't have to remember what it was called. Raw science storage of this magnitude is tricky. It's imperative to keep it cool and out of the sun. Luckily, this crawl space is the perfect environment for both. Once the lab is complete, I can begin my trials of direct raw science infusion. I must know whether this byproduct particle originates from the subject or the process, as I originally assumed. The only way to know for sure is to infuse myself with, um, variable doses. Dangerous? Quite. But it must be done, or I am doomed. If I can replenish these rogue particles in my body, Perhaps I can finally reverse this raisinification. I mean, he's definitely not sounding great there. He is, uh, kind of running out of time when he recorded that. We need one more milk molar in order to increase our maximum mutations, and we definitely want that, so I'm just going to save up. I was going to go for health, and then I'm like, oh wait, we still haven't got the max number of mutations, because having one more of those would be very good. Alright, yeah, so this... I don't even know if this is the same hole we saw, because we saw a hole, but I think we were level with it, so I think I went down a tunnel. Oh, boy. Okay, well, going down now. Alright, that's a regular mosquito, not a tiger mosquito. Which, again, leads me to believe that we are meant to go down here before going towards the castle. I hear water fleas, so there must be enemies in the water here. Are these regular? No, these are the new water fleas. Okay. I knew that there was another tier of these guys. I think these are spiky water fleas. I'll grab that. I guess we're going to need our our diving gear. I feel a little less squishy now. I mean, we didn't check out that tunnel over there with like five mosquitoes on it. But let's see what's down here in the water. Where did that water flea go? Spiny water flea. Oh, this one actually does have a weakness to sour. Oh god, there's so many of them. Where did they all come from? They're like coming out of the wall. Or multiplying or something. Anyway. Like regular water fleas, they're not very quick. So I think we can mostly ignore them. Even though we're not wearing great armor right now, so... Maybe not ignore them too hard. I also don't think they drop anything unique. They probably just drop more, you know, 
water flea meat. So I should probably kill one just to find out. Yeah, see, they don't do a lot of damage, but there's so many of them that if we stay in one place, I think we'll get fucked up. I'm not clear if there's actually anything in here. I'm not really seeing any, like, tunnels or anything. Uh, well. Tunnel up there. Get a good look at one of these guys. Yeah, they're just kind of mostly translucent exoskeleton. I can't... I can't use them to jump up. Alright, can I, like, platform my way up here? Yeah, this is really what I want to be doing, fighting flying enemies on this little platform. Okay. Actually made it up here. I don't think that web is real. <laughs> I think that is decorative web. Can I go up here? No. I guess the question now is how do we get out of this fucking soggy sinkhole? I want to get over there. I'm thinking we can't actually get over there from here. We need to... We need to climb over and then drop down. back on. A little safe now. We don't actually need to be swimming. However, we cannot keep the Coltana out because we need the torch. <laughs> I know I said we were going to wrap up, but I kind of want to get over to that tunnel before we do. That seems like a good place to begin our next episode, which means I guess I'm not going to be farming the Broodmother this time. Go up here. Wow, there's a lot of pupa down here. Though I don't think I need any because I have like 35 of them. Just from like grabbing them as I'm grinding other stuff in the upper yard. Mosquitoes are annoying. I kind of don't even want to bother fighting them now. Oh, well, good. He shoved me. I thought he was going to shove me off into the water. They're just... They keep coming. There's more of them, like, showing up. mosquitoes for the moment so I think we just need to jump down here and across that route there and that should get us over to that tunnel which uh, hopefully leads us where we want to go I don't even know that might lead us into that termite tunnel we saw before uh, this seems to be oh boy I don't think we want to go in here These are Black Widowlings, and that means that that is a Black Widow in there. This mosquito is super annoying. Now we're just taking damage from Black Widow poison. Yeah. 
I think the healing from this sword is kind of counteracting it a little bit. But uh, yeah, the Black Widow is considerably stronger than the Broodmother. Despite being a regular enemy. They drop a lot of web fiber. Nice. New one for the bestiary. So yeah, you can see that the Black Widow is resistant to every type of damage. Also, I'm not sure if there's a reason to go in here. This looks like a dead end. Moments, the ranger paused in fear, for all knew that the bite of the Black Widow had no cure. Looks like there's another tunnel across from it. I might have to just fucking book it for the exit. Black Widow, nothing to worry about. Plenty to worry about. However, the Black Widow is fairly large because I mean, if you've ever seen a Black Widow, they're very small. Their whole thing is that their their venom is very deadly despite their very tiny size. That did so much damage. That was just a big ass combo. Oh, also the poison stacks, I forgot about that. So yeah, we're definitely not fighting that right now, but I think you can make a a weapon out of it. You know, like a black widow venom dagger. There's a spiderling running around here. I think this just led back up to, you know. Oh no, this is new. There's a door over there. So I think we're on the other side of the sinkhole. Yeah. Just gonna go in here and hope that they can't follow me through the door. Wow. That is a lot of raw science. Okay, we're gonna end on a bit of a cliffhanger here. We're gonna find out what all this is next time. If I don't fucking die of Envenomation before then. Okay, so, thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun, and next time, we're definitely going to be making some story progress, because we found Dr. Tully's Undershed Lab, and we will either find him here, or further evidence of where he ended up before he went full raisin. So until the next one, you folks all take care.